Fuego? What does fuego mean? Is that a real word or is that like a, a word 13 year olds use? This hand is much better on the play than the draw, but I'm going to keep it. Fire in Spanish. Okay, so it's a real word. Got it. Temple Garden Pass. Well, when they play Voice of Resurgence on turn two, we're going to take our deck and crumple it up in a little ball and throw it in the garbage. This deck, this deck has a terrible Voice of Resurgence matchup, which I think makes this deck an okay choice right now because there aren't that many Voice of Resurgences seeing play. That card's pretty terrible in Modern in general. But again, like, Modern's a format where people all play their pet decks. Like, this is my pet deck, so... Your pet deck runs into other pet decks and you have bad matchups. Oh, geez, they didn't do anything. That's so good for us. Oh, baby. It's like Ship Bears. Some kind of, some kind of Antaxes deck. This, this means Eldrazi most likely. What if your mana sprung a leak? Feels like it's about time for a moto re-kick to here. Running a little slow. What's going on, Lost? Yeah, go running, running a little bit late tonight. Yeah, the Mana Leak art is great. It's not a ton of agree. That's the Mana Leak of my, my childhood. I have a Displacer. I think I'm just going to let that happen. I have this Wizard Lightning to take care of that, and we can probably still get some mileage out of these spells that are, or out of this Mana Leak. Yeah, Spell Setter Sprite is a Wizard as well. Oh, oh, that's kind of awkward. Oh, wait, they can't, they can't play. I was going to say they could blink my spell setter sprite to make me counter, counter spells. I'm going to go ahead and kill this, I think. Just get him right on out of there. We're getting into kick burst lightning range here too, which is nice. And clean up thought not seers. It's possible I should have played tap steam vents this turn. Very possible I should have played tap steam vents. Well. I have another TKS. Okay. Well, the good news here is if they're going to take our burst lightning, but then we can fire up these these conclaves and start racing. Must be that time of the month. Jeff looks freshly showered. It is time to throw my bucks his way in tribute. Thank you, Christus, for the 14 months and welcome back. Wait, what? They they must have a reality smasher then. I definitely think I should have played my steam vents tapped last turn because I could have fetched a basic with that. So now I'm going to take an extra point of damage because I have to shock. Well, I get to do that now. I guess they just attack for two here. Is there any... What punishes me for passing the turn? They could Restoration Angel to punish me. So I guess I guess I just kick the Burst Lightning now. Okay. Get a Muta Vault. So then next turn we go... Muta Vault, fire up both Conclaves, crack them for six in the air. I assume we're getting smushered here. And they go get a large order of fries. I'm sorry. They have two smushers we're super dead, but if they just have one, we could be okay here. Remand. All right. So... that down i'm cracking them for four down to 13 and then we're going to seven we're remanding them so if we hit like a burn spell we could be in this game potentially 
I guess with the Muta Vault being added into the mix, if we just draw some lands, we could be okay too, depending on what they have here. Okay, no second Smasher is good for us. We get to send whatever they play this turn back from where it came. Oh, that's brutal. Does that gain some health and can block Muta Vault? This is, this is probably like the definition of a nightmare matchup for us. If I, if I had to venture a guess. They've got giant things our red removal can't deal with. And like, and like decks, decks like this are a big reason why I should probably just like show up playing something like Jeskai Ascendancy or Grishelbrand in, um... In Indianapolis, just like do something objectively powerful so my opponent's playing like a bunch of clunky cards like this that people like to play in modern that I just get to punish them, as opposed to just like feeling bad that like I chose my my cute kind of metagamey deck and then got outpowered by what they're doing. So if we flip to is it worth installing a third party software? Install it depends on what you're looking for, Maester. If we flip to a Bolt or a Wizard Lightning, we kill them, right? They're going to 10, and we'd be attacking for 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yeah, so we, we have them exactly dead if we flip to Wizard Lightning or, or Lightning Bolt here. Yep, you can find Amulet Titan on my YouTube channel. So we have uh, six outs here. Flipping to Cryptic Command also buys us time because it lets us tap to our other team. I will keep that in mind, Full Metal. Which is it? That's another land. Well, you know, flood and die. I think I'm like, this matchup is almost certainly hard for us and what we had, we had eight cards there that if we found them, we would have won the game. In fact, I'm just I'm just not even gonna play this. Let's just uh, move on with my life here. So restart Magic Online because it's lagging real bad. And again, matches like that, you need to be just be like be aware that like you hit you hit a matchup that's got a lot of cards that line up against you. Their deck's probably bad against the field. Like you just gotta shrug those off and like you can't you can't fix a matchup like that. And it's not worth your time to spend testing it or trying. You should just move on. Move on with your life and try and play the matches that you're like actually preparing to play. Like, I think this deck lines up pretty well against like the big mana decks like Valakut and Tron. I think it's good against KCI and Storm, those spell based combo decks. It's decent against Burn. It's very good against Affinity. I think there's a lot of decks in the format that this deck is very reasonable against. Or that has the tools to be very competitive against. I don't know how it lines up against Hollowed One and Humans specifically. It's probably not terrible. We beat Humans last time we played it. Yeah, we played Vapor Snag last time. Vapor Snag is very good against Delph Creatures and Hollowed Ones. Why do I think this deck is good versus Tron? Because it has Counterspell based Disruption and it can apply pressure while it's disrupting its opponent, generally speaking. And all of it's, it, unlike a lot of decks that tend to be more controlling in modern, 100% of the removal in this deck also doubles as reach, so they're not dead draws against Tron. I'm not, like, drawing Terminates and Fatal Pushes. Oh, we conceded to Green-White Eldrazi and Texas. Just, like, full of cards that just destroy our deck. That's a pretty good draw. If my opponent doesn't give me something to Sprite or Mana Leak here, I'm going to flash in a Snapcaster Mage at end of turn just to start attacking them. I don't have anything to flash back very soon with the Snapcaster Mage. And again, when you're disrupting your opponent, you need to also be killing them to end the game. Yeah, there are a ton of, a ton of, uh, there are a ton of, no, I, I won't drive to Indy to play Tron. I, I'd skip an event before I played Tron. I, like, really enjoy playing the Jeskai Ascendancy combo deck. Tron just, like, isn't fun for me to play. It's, like, fine to poke around at, uh, Tron, to me, 
doesn't feel like it gives me enough play against my opponents for me to want to play it in an actual tournament. Tron, I feel like a lot of my matches are decided for me, and that there isn't a lot of wiggle room inside of those matches to make good decisions. So, probably some kind of blue-red control mirror. So the fact that they, like, waited on that lightning bolt is, like, so absurdly good for us. That they're just going to tempo them into the ground here. So, like, next turn we'll get to go, like, play Misty Rainforest and then, like, activate the Mutabolt and swing in. Although it's possible I should have played the Misty Rainforest this turn because they, they're probably a Blood Moon deck and we could get Blood Mooned out here. Yeah. Lucky. Lucky Hogland. Lucky Hogland. All right, deck for five. It's possible I should just hold Leak plus Remand here too, but I kind of just want to like leverage the advantage while they're stumbling. I'm gonna remand the shit out of this Snapcaster Mage. Go back from where he came. <sighs> also, never forget if you don't have any wizards in play, Mutavault lets you turn Wizard Lightning into a Lightning Strike, which is great. You're not wrong, White Seal. You're not. You're not wrong. Yep. T -t Tempo. Really, really good aggressive draw on our part there, being able to leverage them stumbling. This is almost certainly a negate dispel matchup. This is probably a burst lightning out matchup. And I'm not sure, I'm not sure one vapor snag here. I think the one Vapor Snag is better than leaving a Burst Lightning in because Vapor Snag, in addition to tempoing their creatures, remember Vapor, Vapor Snag is also a card that can save one of ours from a piece of removal. So you can like pick your Sprite or your Snapcaster Mage up or your click in response. No, I'm not a big fan of Disdainful Stroke, I don't think. I, I guess they probably have Jace and they might have Cryptic Command, but I feel like I just have so many two mana counter spells that are like, I don't want an 11th two mana counter spell on this deck. Uh, I think JAC is good against KCI because our average nut draw is faster than theirs and silence is very good in that matchup. Uh, you're probably a dog against Infect. Although if you have Path to Exile and Abrupt Decay's post board, you might be okay, but I honestly haven't played the Infect matchup with JAC. And I, I spent a lot of time playing this deck, so... Back before I started playing STG Open events, I actually top 64 to Grand Prix and top 16 to another Grand Prix playing this deck. I've got I've got pro points, chat. That makes me a professional magic player, because I got pro points. This hand is an easy mulligan here, only one land. Love this one. Uh, I'm gonna bottom that looking for lands or burn spells here. What decks am I down to for indie? Uh either this or Jeskai Ascendancy combo. That's not true. It's Spell Stutter, Sprite Dex, or Jeskai Ascendancy combo. Bottom a card, draw immediately draw that card. There's no Scry Bug. There's no Scry Bug. That's a lie. Alright. This is not a Beaumont Courier deck. Oh, oh, we did. We did not properly identifying everything they were doing. Uh, if this was a burst lightning, we'd be in a great spot. But worth noting, Wizard Lightning is often going to be worse than some other things. <sighs> I think we're dead here. I think not being able to kill this is going to run us out of the game very quickly. This is going to die before, before we get to blockers. Fuck, do they have an Electrolyze? That's so brutal. That's rough. All right. Well, if we draw a land here, we could stay in the game potentially. But if we don't, we're going to be pretty far behind. Just going to concede. This game. What a what a fun and interesting match of Magic, where both players made lots of sweet decisions. Yeah, that's the biggest reason that you don't. Also, like, I've I've actually played a Grixis variation of this deck before, and it's just it's it's just a, like a functionally different deck in my mind, just because like. In addition to 
in addition to um, the mana base being painful, like playing black cards want, lends you towards wanting to play... Um, I think I want don't want these negates. And the Lava Man's probably fine. This is probably good, I think. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know, if, I don't know if I want these abrades or not. Probably not. I think with Staticaster and these, I'm probably fine. Let's do let's do this. That's true. At this rate, we might make it to Narsa Cannon. You're not wrong. I plan to play all five matches with this deck in this league, regardless of what our record is, though, just to get a feel for it. Seems pretty good. And like one of the things that like I'm I'm play we're playing magic for fun in the stream too, but like even when I'm playing to like test, like just like sitting there and playing a game that like we're very likely to lose is just like such a bad use of testing time in my mind. It's possible I should just shock in this steam vents here. I've played a blue white build with Spellcrawler before that like actually wasn't terrible. It's very possible because I drew this bolt, I should have just shocked that in. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. That's that is quite excellent. Sulfur Falls is interesting. I'm surprised that they have that instead of Spire Bluff Canal. Maybe they're playing both. Is this possible they're playing both? Um, do I want to bolt them? I feel like I do. I feel like I just want to like take this and upstairs it so that way next turn I can snap bolt them. Deal. That's aggressive. Yep. Staticaster is a wizard. Grim Lava Mancer is a wizard as well. So our three creatures in the sideboard all enable wizard lightning as well. I did, K-Smith. It's interesting. I'm playing this out now because this way if they have a counter spell, they uh, don't get to do it. They don't get a token, sorry, is what I mean. What the fuck is in their hand? What what could possibly be in their hand at this point? I'm really kind of confused. I wonder if they're a thing in the ice deck. One of the sweet things about Staticaster 2 is that Staticaster is a card that enables our 3 damage spells to trade up into 4 toughness creatures like Restoration Angels and Thing in the Ice is. I guess they could have Cryptic Commands. Or negates? Like, there's no way this doesn't get cryptic did if they have it, right? I guess they could have bolts, but if they had bolts, they would have killed this before it did a thing, right? I really love Muta Vault in this deck. It's such an efficient creature land, just like getting to spend two mana to deal two points of damage is so huge. And, like, even here, like, they're down to nine, right? And, like, I technically have six points of damage in my hand, which is absurd. So, like, I only need to get in a couple more chip shots before I kill them. What's going on, Steven? Good evening. Static caster of your own. Yep, 10 out of 10 agree that Mutaball is just like a great card. Alright, so we're going to let this happen, and then before they get to untap with this bad boy, I'm going to snap. Snap Wizard Lightning that. So they have three cards left here. We've got a little bit of power in play. They're at eight. We have the Static Caster to lock any... Well, I guess if they have a Snapcaster of their own. If they have Snap of their own, it's a little bit awkward. Oh, they're a Del they're Blue Red Delver as well. That's funny. If it, right? 
I actually have six. That's one of the reasons I love playing this deck is because it gets to play like a reasonable land count and it gets to play a bunch of utility lands. Like I have two, I have two fairy conclaves on top of the, on top of the four muta vaults. So we are just like all the creature lands come to me. All right, right, and that's that's what modern is, right? Like you just like do your thing, everybody else does their thing, and like oh, I'll just do sweet things. And it's not like an exact mirror like their deck. Lands and delvers, yep. Right, all right. Well, we're we're one and one. Thanks for hanging out, folks. Welcome. My name is Jeff Hoagland. Welcome to a little bit of Hoogle After Dark. Hanging out, playing some Magic the Gathering like we always do. I stream Magic full-time on this channel. If you're enjoying my stuff, please consider subscribing or checking out some of my wonderful sponsors. Cardster.com would love to help you turn some of your cards into other cards or cash. Direct with other players. There's no haggling. They just take 1% fee off the top. Inkedgaming.com would love to help you customize your gaming experience. Using code Jeff12, you can save 12% on custom playmats, mouse pads, binders, and bags with them. Coolstuffinc.com. Buys and sells a lot of cool stuff, including CC singles. Using promo code Jeff5, you can save 5% on magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh cards with them. And of course, this stream wouldn't be possible without viewers like Anironics, Justin Nivik, and all y'all out there. Thanks for hanging out. Make sure you hit the follow button if you're enjoying what you see at the very least. <sighs> Double cryptic feels a little bit rough. It's possible two cryptics is too many at the top end of this deck, and I want just like just want like just one. Like cryptic's really good when you it, crypt, having access to some number of cryptic commands makes your snapcaster mages better because it gives them more utility i use a ten dollar keyboard from uh <laughs> from amazon uh hollow boys It's not that I'm strictly serious, Sleeton. It is also that um, my kids are sleeping right up behind me here, so I have to be a little bit more, I have to be considerate of them while I'm, while I'm doing this. This is a good example of where Vapor Snag is absurd. It is an Amazon basic keyboard, I believe. It was an HP, so I don't know if that counts. I don't have anything else going on here. We're in a pretty good spot. Ideally, I'd like to fetch a Steam Vents tapped here. So they've been to Tassiker here. If they have another large creature, we're basically going to need to concede here. I don't have the tools game one really to keep up with that. Yeah, it looks like they have a Delve Threat. Because they they took our Mana Leak away with Burning Inquiry. We could have potentially been okay, but like they took our Mana Leak with Burning Inquiry. Oh, that's really unfortunate. That's such a shitty card. It's so frustrating to play against. It's like makes magic really not fun. Do not do not enjoy the games of magic that that card generates. Just a, a lot of feel bad moments. So a braid, roast, and dismember are all decent here. I don't think this is a grim lava mansa or Staticaster matchup. Three man to mana leak are interesting. How much longer? I have no idea. We're gonna finish this league at the very least, and I might do one more with Narsa Cannon before we wrap up. Trying to get in as much in as possible to reduce the queue as quick as possible. I guess Burst Lightning's kind of medium in this matchup. Electrolyze is pretty bad. Actually, I think I'd rather have Burst Lightning than Wizard Lightning. Because Burst Lightning kills their one drop on one, which is pretty important. Let's, let's try this. It's possible I want a second Roost in my sideboard as well. I had two roasts in the board last time we played this, like being able to kill late night democracy bits towards the deck of your choice. Well, thank you, Konamas. I appreciate it. Uh, they generally don't play Cathartic Reunion. That's not a card that, that their archetype generally plays. I say I need some lands, but it's pretty okay otherwise. Wandering Casserole. I don't know what you're talking about. 
Do we like Lava Mancer instead of Caster to leverage Bulls? Maybe the Lava Mancer could be okay, but I think with the Abrades being able to kill Hollowed Ones, that's enough there. No, I don't think Fumarol is good enough. I think I'd play, I'd play more copies of Fairy Conclave before I played that card. DJ Hedgehog, thank you very much for the three month resubscription and welcome back. I think part of part of what makes this deck good is the fact that we're able to hold up interaction a lot of the time while we're activating our creature land. So like having to spend five mana to attack with the creature land effectively is, is a lot. I mean, we have two tap lands in our deck. I have two copies of Fairy Conclave, but the way you want to think about creature lands in decks like this, especially, is you always want to compare the amount of mana you're spending on the creature land to the amount of damage you're getting out of the creature land. So for instance, Wandering Fumarol is five mana in, four damage out, whereas Fairy Conclave is three mana in, two damage out, and Mutavault is the best rate of them. It's two mana in, two damage out. So that's, that's how, at least in my mind, I like to think about um, what what I'm doing. They have a lightning bolt flame laid out if that's where. My wife is a business analyst for a major insurance company. Survey says, we're going to miss. So we're basically just spreading off any one mana spell they give us access to here. We just want to like put as much pressure into play as possible and beat them down. Especially with the Snapcaster Mage and Lightning Bolt in our hand also. We just want to like get them. No blocks. Good 18. Archie Coder with that brand new Twitch Prime support. And there's a lot of great people making a lot of great stuff on Twitch right now. Thanks for supporting mine this month with that. Welcome. That's a big old kick in the dick. Um, I'm just going to bolt their dome here. I can take my cryptic command. Joke's on you, he wasn't gonna flip anyways. So if they flash back this Faithless Looting, we will spell Stutter Sprite it, because remember, even though it's flashback, it's converted mana cost is still the number that's printed in the corner of the card. Also willing to Sprite that. Even if they have a removal spell here, this means they spent a removal spell on my spell stutter sprite and not something better, which is nice for us. Get my tap land into play. God, this Delver just like would have never flipped. Uh, I think I'm just gonna pass here. No reason to let them know that we have a land. They know about our Snapcaster Mage. Yep. Uh, because I could not counter Brutality, you should read the magic cards that I have in my hand. So, in response to these triggers, I would like to snap Lightning Bolt this Flame Blight Adept, so that way they no longer have a creature that meets the four power clause, so they can't uh, bring these back. And then, uh, depending on what the last card in their hand is, we're actually winning this race currently. So I'm sure their last card is like something terrifying that's going to like put us in the ground. But at the moment, with known information, we're technically ahead since we're ahead on health total and we both have two power threats. It's a Delve Threat, right? No joke. They actually haven't played a Delve Threat in 21 cards yet, so there's a pretty good chance it's a Delve Threat. 
It's actually it's funny. A lot of people think Spell Stutter Sprite is Mana Leak Fairy. Spell Stutter Sprite is not Mana Leak Fairy. It's it's hard. It's actually an interesting question. Would Spell Stutter Sprite be a better or worse card if it was Mana Leak Fairy versus the text box that it has now? Like, what do you? It it would probably it would, it would certainly be better on turn two, right? But like as the game went longer, it would actually be much worse. They drew a Delve Threat for the turn. Looks like they drew a Delve Threat for the turn. Collective Brutality, maybe? Feels like they're paying additional costs here. No, as in counter a spell unless they paid extra mana equal to the number of fairies you controlled. All right, so it's not a Delve Threat. I feel like it's Collective Brutality. Feels like collective brutality the way they paused. It felt like this is uh, I'm paying extra. Which collective brutality is gonna make this a little bit harder to race here, which is unfortunate for us. It's a shame we don't don't have a remand or something like that. They're at six, so I assume if they have brutality here, they're gonna kill Snapcaster Mage and drain us. Just killing Snapcaster Mage. Okay. I'm gonna keep this bolt in my hand for now. Dismember is going to have diminishing returns real fast here. Although I guess... I guess it protects us from a delve threat, kind of, for a turn or two at least. It's either really fun or really bad. Interesting that they did that post combat because like they could totally hit a dull threat or a hollowed one here and like flip these flame wakes into play right. So like why why didn't they do that beforehand? Like what's the what's the deal here? Why do we why do we sequence that way? Sure. Good news on them tapping that blood crypt there means if they want to play a dull threat they have to fetch shock and then they die to this lightning bolt which is great for us. I am away, cunts. Snapcaster. Click. Click's pretty good. Um, I think I actually want to click them now. Because this way, if they have Fatal Push, they have to Fetch Shock to push my Vendillion click. Grim Lavamancer. Uh, I'm going to let them keep that one because it means I'm not... It means they're dead. So I just don't want them to draw a card to kill my Vendillion click here. There's a small chance that we get punished for this line, but I'm pretty sure we're just supposed to, like, leave them any card that, like, leaves them dead to click attack plus bolt you here. Cracking the fetch land is interesting there. That kind of sends me the message that they don't have fatal pushes in their deck. Because if they had fatal pushes, they would they would save those so they could trigger a revolt. Alright, so you're dead. What's going on, Afara? Hope you're having a good day. I want like some surgicals in my 75. That's very possible. I think I want this Grim Lava Mancer and I think I'm gonna trim this mana leak. Is it possible I want these static casters just to like nug down their blood gas? I wonder if that's that's possible, especially on the draw. I feel like I want at least one of these. Cryptic Command's a little bit expensive, but I feel like the ability to like tap their team and draw a card is very valuable. Plus just like unsummoning their thing is like not terrible. Oh, they have Grim Lava Mancers too. Yeah, you're right. I like I like these Static Casters. Let's do that. Let's do that. See how it feels. Like I said, I think there's a very real possibility I want another copy of Roast in my sideboard for both uh, Thought Not Seer decks and these Gourmet Gangler decks. I 
I'm going to keep this hand. This hand is very good if we draw lands. That being said, they're going to cast Burning Inquiry, discard our only land, and then we won't get to play Magic at all. Hey, it didn't happen yet. All right, well, could get punished here, but we'll see. Hey, look at that. They give us some lands, chat. They did take away our Vapor Snag, though, so if they play a Fatty here, we could be in trouble. Would you cut the Dismember for a Roast? No, that doesn't make sense, Bardic, because I want, I want a third way to deal with those large threats. If they go double big creature here, we could be in a lot of trouble. Harvest Pyre could be interesting. They didn't bring back Flame Wake. Does that mean I'm getting Delve Threaded here? That would be really bad for me. I think we're getting Delve Threaded, which I think means we're dead. It's just like hard to beat nine power on turn two. Interesting. Oh, Grim Alvamancer. Okay, so... I think I want a Wizard Lightning here, because if I flip to a Bolt, I want to be able to Bolt or Burst Lightning, I want to be able to kill this. The important thing to remember is that this Delver is not a Wizard on his backside. So he is only a Wizard on the front, he is not a Wizard on the back, so that's something you need to remember. It's a shame we lost our Braid and our, that that Burning Inquiry helped us hit our land there, but we lost our Braid and our Vapor Snag to it, so like... Six in one hand, half dozen in the other. Like, I've got answers to this, but we just, like, don't have them now. Um, do I want to double block here? I feel like I do. I feel like I'm supposed to do this. That's ah, really bad for us. So I can snap a Vapor Snag here, which is okay. We're going down to four. Yeah, the hollowed one just like Losing, losing both of our solid answers to Hollow One and like them getting to get the Flame Wake back into play because of it was just like really rough this game. It's possible I just want a third Vapor Snag in the 75 too. Like maybe that's just better than like a second Roast or a Harvest Pyre. Although a Harvest Pyre seems pretty reasonable. This deck doesn't hammer its graveyard that hard. Your Delve creature. That's probably the game. I guess I have Wizard Lightning here. I can snap, snap Wizard Lightning. We're just gonna die to a die to a bolt here, though. I didn't guarantee to have the fourth land, Scouty, so I think making a play based on, like, assuming I'm going to hit the land seems greedy. So, like, if I knew I had the fourth land, I might consider that play, but I think because I didn't know the fourth land was coming, I can't, I can't make that play. Yeah, I'm just gonna, like, put the Hollowed Boy into play here. So I get to bolt this, but then, like, I'm dead to bolts here. I have to deal with this Flame Wake Phoenix. I discarded Hollywood, so I assume we're dead. Yeah, very dead. That's a tough one. Leagues like this are tough. Leagues like this remind me why I don't play. Like, why, like, trying to play Magic competitively is very frustrating. 
especially especially modern like i really enjoy playing modern like playing magic and modern for fun is really sweet but like when i when i kind of like a deck and i i like i'm thinking about taking it to a tournament it's really tough to like not be like well like that game i had no control over like i lost a burning inquiry and it felt really bad and then like we got hosed by like a deck full of cards that's like terrible against the field but lined up really well against us and it's like well when you add all that up and then like you spend 200 dollars traveling for a weekend to play it it just feels really bad yeah, the inquiry and the inquiries both games put us very far behind. Nah, I'd rather I'd rather skip a weekend before I went and played Tron. I just like don't enjoy it. And it's fine. Like I'll probably end up playing the Just Kai Ascendancy combo deck if I'm being honest. Like that deck like does something kind of sweet and uh, is very objectively powerful. Just like it kills people on like the second and third turns of the game. This league was probably enough to hammer this deck out of my system. I think it's really sweet, and there's probably something here if you want to just, like, play play fun, sweet games of Magic, but it's just, like, not broken enough. Have a good evening, Sleeton. Catch you later. I do, I do love me a crappy Flash deck. It's definitely one of my favorite mechanics in Magic. Get dumpstered one more time here, and then go to bed. Yeah, I'm not going to do the Narsai Cannon deck tonight. We'll just leave that one in the queue for later. Maybe we'll play that tomorrow. I think I'm gonna do two or three leagues tomorrow, and that can be it can be our closer tomorrow night. Put this into play tapped, I think. Uh Valicut? Smells like Valicut. All right, sweet. You get to try the Alpine Moons out on the sideboard at least. I wonder what it's like to draw spells. It's probably pretty neat. Yep. Yeah, we're going to play some more Modern tomorrow. I don't know that I'm going to run. We've been going for almost six hours tonight. I don't know that I'm going to stream as long as I did tonight, tomorrow night. But uh, we'll play for a little bit at least. Put my 1-1 into play so I can start nugging them to death. <laughs> this is my 1-1. It is not impressive, but it is here and is ready to attack you. Oh, we got some mana leaks going on. Get you. Get you. Be terrified of my sprite. She's going to give it to you. What GP am I going to next? I don't really go to Grand Prix. I'm going to the Open in Indianapolis at the end of the month. Do you know what time I'm starting tomorrow? I don't. It's going to depend on when the top eight for the Grand Prix finish is. I'm actually just going to go ahead and mana leak this. Um, Mana Leak kind of has diminishing returns in this matchup. It can, it's good at catching Primeval Titan, but it, like if they're on the Scape Shift plan, like Mana Leak's not going to be good at stopping Scape Shift from killing us. And they missed a land drop. That's sweet. That's sweet. Well, you know, spells at some point would be wonderful. But they're missing lands, I guess, so we've got that going for us. It's really kind of terrifying when that deck misses lands, though, right? Because like, they, they missed lands, they didn't have another two-mana ramp spell, so like, what on God's green earth is in their hand? It must just be, like, a pile of titans and other things. Hopefully we can find, like, some Snapcaster Mages on our Cryptic Commands here. Would be ideal. And, like, if they have a titan here, I'm going to be, like, really sad that I spent this mana leak already. But, again, like, there's no guarantee that, like, titan's their finisher ever. Although I guess they do usually have more titans than anything else. Hey, look, at least that land attacks, I guess. I don't know. I'll probably play one more league. If we finish this one 3-2 or better, I'll probably play one more. Uh, I don't go to Grand Prix because they are absurdly expensive to travel to. Traveling for Magic in general is expensive, and traveling to Grand Prix is more expensive than traveling to Opens. The entry fee is higher, and the number of players that participate is more, which means you're less likely to make your money back. Wizard, Wizards of the Coast almost certainly wants nothing to do with me in the content that I create. I'm more, I'm more just mellow than down at the moment. Like, I'm definitely, definitely a little bit, you know, it's, it's almost, it's 11 o'clock here. I appreciate the bits, though. Thank you, Frozen. 
Uh, if they don't have a way to kill us next turn, we're in an okay spot here. This uh, this Delver draw, this other Sprite doesn't accomplish a whole lot, but so let's see if they, f if they, if they jam another Titan down our throat. Hopefully it's just like a Bloodbraid Elf or a Ramp spell here. Sweltering Suns. How badly do I want to lose to a Lightning Bolt chat? How badly do I want to lose to a Lightning Bolt? Pretty fucking badly is the answer. Pretty fucking badly. Oh no, they're gonna escape shift us. Oh no! It was just their master plan to bait us into fetching to 18. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, it's so terrible. It's so terrible, chat. It's so terrible. I was so excited! I was so excited that they took all of our toys away. Why do you have to be so mean, opponent? Why you have to be so mean? It's only game. It's only game. Mm, all right, it's a bit like that. I think that's good. Let's do it. Let's run it. We did. That's true. We did not. We did not lose to Bolt. You are not wrong. Technically, did not lose to Bolt. Um. This hand has no consistent source of pressure, and Bolt is not good in our opening hand. We want Bolts in order to have cards to kill them off the top in the mid to late game. This hand does not have pressure either, but it's got an Alpine Moon. I'm going to bottom that. I'm going to keep this at six. I'm not excited to keep a hand without pressure, but it's definitely better than Mulliganing more. That one. Please name that one. Well, no, I don't think you want to play Faithless Looting. I'll, people are so used to seeing Faithless Looting being played in decks like Hollowed One, and um, they're so used to seeing it being played in decks like Hollowed One and Mardu Pyromancer that they forget that. Um, Faithless Looting is card disadvantage, which is a really big deal. Uh, Alpine Moon turns off all of the Tron Lands Pandazed. Yeah, Faithless Looting is very bad if you can't leverage card advantage from your graveyard. I know flashing in my one power guy here doesn't seem like it matters a lot, but this card's going to end up adding up. Usually, this, if this card gets in, you know, four to five points of damage, that's worth the two mana we spent on it. They don't have a ton of one mana spells to counter in this matchup anyway, so, like, holding it trying to counter something is, like, kind of silly. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Shredder. They're so used to people calling it Braid Sword that it's actually not that good. Uh, one thing that's probably worth testing is cutting lands from this deck, like cutting, cutting like, two lands and two spells and, like, adding some ops to the deck. I wasn't a fan of Serum Visions in this deck last time I played it because it, uh, it isn't very good. You don't really want to tap out on your turn, but Opt kind of changes the dynamic because it lets you play on your opponent's turn. I feel like Shadow of the Doubt, Shadow of Doubt is just kind of narrow, Scouty. I think, like, the decks you'd want to Shadow of Doubt, you, you'd you also want to Alpine Moon them, and Alpine Moon is just the better card for that slot. Like, obviously, this doesn't flip Delver and it doesn't cantrip, but, like, Alpine Moon just, like, actually hoses them. We'll hold on for this for now in case we draw Delver. You know, magic. It's an interesting and low variance game.
And, like, the worst part about, like, this whole game is that, like, we're playing 23 lands in this deck, but six of them attack. Like, not only are we flooding, but we're explicitly flooding with the 17 lands that don't attack. Not a whole lot, Omaha. Just losing. Losing matches of magic to flooding out. Deck case is a good draw. It's a good draw. I'm going to put this mountain into play. I will get all my lands out. Get to snap bolt here. I wonder if they're going to tighten us next turn. I mean, cards like Alpine Moon and Damping Sphere are like nothing like Blood Moon. Like that comparison's kind of absurd in my mind. Like Blood Moon's not good because it's mana disrupt because it's it targets like big mana decks. Like Blood Moon is good because it kills mid range decks. That's why Blood Moon's good. All right, well, they don't have Titan in their hands. So that's good for us. No Titan, no Bloodbraid Elf is working out well. They still play Hearthstone? Yeah, I just haven't been streaming it. Streaming Hearthstone content is just, like, impossible to get into. If you don't if you don't have someone that's willing to host you a bunch that already streams Hearthstone, you'll never, you'll never be able to get viewers. But that's true for, like, most games on Twitch. All right, well, they're down to six. This negates kind of medium as far as disruption goes, just because they're so, people are so annoying. Nobody asked for your opinion on Hearthstone. Hearthstone's a game that has a lot of strategic depth and interesting gameplay, and it's much lower variance than Magic on average. Nah, I'm going to take off after this one, JMB. I've been going for almost six hours. We've got one more match in this one that I'm going to call it a night. I'll be back tomorrow night. I'm going to do Justin's deck and I think Grixis Scorio and then Narset Cannon. Hey, Wizard Lightning. True. Sure. All right. Well, in spite of flooding out, I'm 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 gonna pretend that this Alpine Moon is actually doing something, and like they have four scape shifts in their hand that can't kill me right now. Let's pretend that they have four scape shifts in their hand that can't kill me. Mutavault does kill, does turn Wizard Lightning into Lightning Strike. You are not wrong. They drew a Titan. They drew a Titan. Okay. All right, well, we've got Snapcaster Mages and um, Lightning Bolts and Wizard Lightnings that kill them here. How is that good game, Iron? We have a bunch of draws and we have a bunch of redraws. Like the, the Valakuts are turned off by the Alpine Moon. Yeah, we have a we have a couple turns here. Uh, I boarded the burst lightnings out. So put it back up one of those on that. So what I've got, I've got three bolts and one wizard lightning left in my deck, and then three snapcaster mages, and then cryptic commander like redraws because they get to top the team. I like how it puts mana of any color on it twice because there's two Alpine Moons out. That's really funny. Yeah, Cryptic. Cryptic is lethal as well. Okie doke. Well, we're going to fetch to thin now since we're very dead anyways. 
I guess we're dead to double bolt if we fetch the thin, but they've already played two bolts, so I'm gonna fetch the thin. I have negate too if they have double bolt. No, I don't really play paper tournaments, and I'm not a big fantasy old. You are one turn too late, Vindiclick. Yep. Yep. This game, this game was really close, especially when you consider we drew as many lands as the Valakut Titan player, and if we would have just, like, drawn a... F oh, I could have clicked myself. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh. Oh. All right, let's play one more. Let's play one more. Play one more. No, I'm gonna play the last one. I'm gonna play the last one. No, we're gonna play one more. I'm gonna play the last one. And that, and that is why it's, you know, it's tough to know. It's tough to, you know, think about, like, and we drew really poorly that game, right? Like, just, like, absurdly bad. And I could have, I could have clicked into the Winning Burn spell there still, even though we drew absurdly bad. Thank you for pointing that out. That was a good line, and I appreciate you pointing that out. Just gonna get you out of my chat permanently. That's not constructive or useful. Let's get right the fuck out. I wonder if it's possible I'm supposed to lead on Spire Bluff Canal since I have Bolt and Remand here. Another voice of resurgence deck. A little bit punished for not leading on Spire Bluff Canal, but remand up this turn's probably good enough. Are they playing just guy ascendancy combo? Maybe the, the foothills and the scalding turn are weird for that deck, but bir bird's sleight of hand is weird in general. So I'm gonna shock this in because I don't mind telegraphing the click, but I don't wanna telegraph cryptic command the following turn. They could be some kind of copycat deck, but usually the copycat deck plays Oath of Dissa, not Sleight of Hand. Yeah, I agree, Bardic, that we've run we've run below average and they've still been very close. And like that's the that's the part that like people that are both bad at magic and don't understand how to formally test that like it's hard it's hard to evaluate for these people where it's just like well my record is currently one in three but if i think back on how the games have gone like i my record could easily be much better than that if the games had just like if these very small percentage points had broken just slightly differently What version of Blue Moon do I like the best? Um, I like the build that's the Possibility Storm build.
Correct. Yes, definitely. There is a lot going on while I stream as well. And it's it's really tough, especially when you're... I did not take anything with the click. Um, it's really tough, especially when you're like emotionally invested in the game that you're playing and like the deck that you're working on, to be able to separate those losses that were razor thin and the ones where you made mistakes from the ones that are just like, oh, my deck wasn't good enough. It's, it's very, very difficult to do that a lot of the time, even, even as an experienced player. Um, I definitely want these negates. These Vapor Snags seems pretty, seem pretty bad. Grim Lava Mancer is probably fine. Trim this Electrolyze. I don't think I want Staticaster here. I'm just going to click Submit now. Sand seems pretty good. Being able to kill their mana dork is good. It's, it's bad against Sylvan Carry but we don't have a ton of good hands that are we don't have a ton of hands that are great against Sylvan Carry Edited. It's not like we have spell snare. And this is I've had a lot of people ask me, like, why am I playing copies of Burst Lightning when I'm not playing full of four full copies of wizard lightning and games like this against like mana creatures and infect creatures especially um they're they're a big deal having these cards that allow us to be more mana efficient basically why do i not have a spell snare to in your deck it feels like a great tempo card it is a great tempo card i just think the matches where spell snare are great right now tend to be good matchups for this deck Like, the places I envision this deck struggling are things like Humans and Hollowed One, and Spell Snare comes up pretty short in those matchups. So I'm interested in making changes to the deck and playing cards that help matches that I think are going to be hard. What do you mean by right Wizards deck, Colin? Like, I didn't build this deck with a wizard theme in mind. It just, like, happens to be playing cards that are also wizards, so I get to play some wizard cards. Because I don't have a counterspell next turn, we're probably going to draw step click them. No, I think Time Sieve is very much a win more card in the Thopter Sword decks. The games that you're going to win because of Time Sage, you generally would have won anyways. And like honestly, like especially that last match where I lost to lost to that Titan Shift player where I missed that line, like those matches where you miss those lines and realize that you missed them are just more valuable when it comes to growing as a player than just like winning every match that you play. Your opponent's build of JAC does does not seem particularly good from my experience playing that archetype. You do, yeah, you don't want to bring in, bringing an Alpine Moon against a decks like humans. I think uh, fundamentally misidentifies what your role is in that matchup. Your your goal isn't to like make your counter spells good. Your goal is to have cards that impact the board because they're a deck that's going to play to the board regardless of how much counter magic you have. Each little, so again, this deck isn't killing on turn four, but like saying that it can't kill on turn four, so thus it's not good, like that implies that we're not doing anything before then. So you're right. As far as like linear racing decks go, this deck is a fucking shitty deck as far as linear racing goes, but this deck isn't good because it, it's linear. It's good because it interacts with the opponent while also generally applying pressure while it interacts with the opponent. Thanks for the bits, Twizzle. I hope you feel better. Glittering Wish. Yep. So again, like if you're looking, if you're looking for a deck to just like linear your opponent to death, this is definitely not the deck for you and not the deck you want to be playing in modern. But if you're looking for a deck that like disrupts the opponent and like applies pressure while disrupting the opponent, that's what this deck is going to do. Uh, Alpine Moon would have won us a game against Valica Titan if I played a little bit better. Bounce the land is interesting. 
All right, well, we finished two and three in the league, but I think with slightly better play, we definitely would have been three and two. And I think, um, I think one of the matches we lost was just like an absurdly bad matchup as far as the cards we were playing, but it wasn't a deck that like you're really going to play against in a tournament, so I wouldn't really worry about that while I'm testing. Thoughts on the deck is Narset Cannon. Is this no? This is this is blue red Delver, blue red fairies, blue red Delver. Whatever you wanna, whatever you wanna talk about it, whatever you wanna call it. What am? What do I like? What do I like? What do I dislike about the deck? Um, part of me, I'm gonna sit down because I'm gonna sit down for my post stream wrap up anyways while we while we do this. Um, What deck was a completely awful matchup? A deck full of Kitchen Finxes and Voices of Resurgence. So, fun fact, the last time I played this archetype a ton was when Birthing Pod was legal, so that tells you how long ago I played it. And when I played it, when Birthing Pod was legal, we played two Pillar of Flames in the main deck, and we played three or four Magma Sprays in the sideboard, so you could just, like, spray and pillar your way through Voices and Kitchen Finxes. I really don't know if I like... The idea of adding up to the deck. I, I really don't. Um, I really feel like cards like Opt and Serum Visions are too... Modern is a format about generating tempo and using your mana efficiently every turn to interact with what your opponent's doing by and large. And cards like Opt and Serum Visions, in my experience generally aren't worth the mana you're investing into them they also take the deck and make it significantly worse against things like humans when you're getting taxed by things like thalia that that being said there might be there might be some merit to just like trimming the 22nd the 23rd land off the top and just like getting rid of these cryptic commands like maybe Maybe the cryptic commands are just absurdity, and like this is this is too high to be curving. Like Snapcaster Mage is already one of the things that you have to think about when you're building these blue decks with Snapcaster Mage, is that it's very easy when you're visualizing your curve to leave Snapcaster Mage down here. But the reality of the situation is that Snapcaster Mage is generally a three mana spell, and often it's a four mana spell when you're snapping these these remands and these mana leaks. I'm just not talking about Faithless Looting right now. Just. All right, we talked about that earlier. Go back and watch the replay. How do you like leaks versus remands? I think they're, they're they do different things. Also, like if you've ever like remanded your opponent twice and then and then mana leaked them the third time they go to play their spell, it's just such a good feeling. Oh, Harvest Pyre is a good one. Yeah, I like that one a lot actually. I'm gonna I'm gonna drag that into my sideboard right now before I forget. So, one of the things that I think is very important about this deck is that the um, every piece of removal in the main deck should double as reach. So I don't want things like Harvest Pyre, Abrade, Roast, and Dismember. I, do, I don't want these in the main deck because I want every card in my main deck to be able to point to my opponent's face when we're playing against something like Tron or Valakut. No, I'm going to be done for the night. I'm just kind of sitting here thinking about thinking about what I want, what I want to do with this deck. So if you're looking for more magic, you know, want to switch over to another Twitch channel, I'm going to think about this for, think out loud on stream about this for a couple of minutes, about what I want to do for next time we play this, but I'm definitely done playing magic for the evening. I'll be back uh, tomorrow night, and we will play some Grixis as foretold, as well as Narset Cannon, and then a really terrible blue-white control deck that Justin paid for. So I think, I think I'll cut those for next time. And then the question is like, if I'm cutting a land here, do I want to cut a utility land or do I want to cut one of our untapped lands? Rather than just three roast. Well, roast is a sorcery. Roast is also pretty bad against humans, not only because it's a sorcery, but because it also can't kill Mantis Rider. You can't play Misbind Click because this deck doesn't have enough fairies in it. You're gonna get blown out. You're gonna you're gonna get blown out. Cryptics, okay. Cryptics, Cryptics tap draw mode is very powerful. So I think from that from that aspect, I think Cryptic is very good. I don't, I don't think Electrolyze is very good in this format. 
I, I think Flame Slash is really terrible in a format with Gourmet Gangler. So I think that's very, very bad. Flame Slash almost never kills Tarmogoyf, and it never kills Gourmet Gangler. Is it Charm? If it could shock my opponent, I would play it. But is it Charm's also very hard to cast in my Muta Vault deck. You should watch my YouTube channel if you didn't see a deck, if you haven't seen that deck before. I think one Electrolyze is fine. I think having some random one-offs in your deck to allow your stat... Because you're... Honestly, I don't even just hate, like, a Miser's Cryptic Command. Because having having these like kind of random one ofs at the top of your deck that offer you utility allow your snapcaster mages to be more flexible in the late game because basically like one cryptic commander one electrolyze can end up being two copies of this card and when that card is very good having two copies of it is like pretty reasonable I feel like Pillar of Flame is just like worse than Burst Lightning there's just like not enough copies of Voice of Resurgence to play Pillar of Flame I don't think I really don't want to play Opt. I really don't want to play Opt. It's su it's such a weak effect. And I, like it doesn't help set up Delver of Secrets. I've actually played Telling Time in this deck in the past because it helps set up Delver of Secrets. But that's probably some nonsense. Yes, I should play Chandra Torch of Defiance in my Remand Mana Leak deck. That sounds like some A plus A plus Twitch chat deck building. It's very possible. I just want to drag the curve down. Ah, uh, yes. I should play Koth in my deck that has four mountains in it. That's that's some A-plus Twitch chat deck building, too. <laughs> this has been... This, this little session here at the end is getting recorded for YouTube. And, like, when people ask me why I don't build decks on stream... Uh, yeah, like, I like dragging the curve down, I think. It's possible just, like... So, like, I have three spell slots here, basically, right now. Are there any other threats I can play in the deck? Any other cards that, like, kill my opponent that I could play? A third Vapor Snag's probably not absurd. There's a, there's a lot of creature decks in the format. Thing in the Ice is interesting. Storm Chaser Mage. Storm Chaser Mage. That's a card that could be, that could have text too. Now I like these spells, chat. I just have... I have like a couple slots. All right, I'm going to I'm going to sign off so I can stop I can stop having Twitch chat scream scream deck card ideas at me that we've already shot down. I'll catch all y'all around later. Uh if you didn't catch the league, it'll be up on YouTube with the rest of them here momentarily and uh I'll be back with this deck probably at some point in the future. I need to figure out if I want to play this deck or not at Indie or whatnot. I'll be back tomorrow night with not this deck but some other modern decks that are in the queue. And thanks everyone for the support and for the the subs and all that as always. I do appreciate it. I grab someone to host here before I sign off.